So you want a better ADC for your Arduino, but you don't want to pay for it? That's great, I feel the same way really. So let's do this. There are three tricks that you can do to get a better ADC for free. Trick number one is don't use the VDD as the reference, but unfortunately that is the default. Trick number two is calibrate your reference. Trick number three is take a lot of samples and take the average. Now let's take a look at the details. So let's talk about trick number one, which is do not use the VDD as your reference unless you really have to. By default, the Arduino library uses the VDD as ADC reference, and that is very convenient. The only problem is the VDD is usually not a very high quality signal. In this particular example, what I'm showing here is a Arduino Nano measuring its own VDD and displaying it onto this LCD screen. So as you can see here, using VDD as reference has two problems. One is the VDD is jumping up and down like crazy here. The other problem is the value is way off. That does not sound good. You expect 5 volts here. But it's never 5 volts as you can see here. It's more like 4.5 or 4.8. Of course you may ask, why does that even matter? Well, as it turns out, it matters a lot. To understand the implication of using a low quality reference such as the VDD, let's take a look at what exactly an ADC does. This is what an ADC actually does. The ADC output code equals to the input voltage here divided by the reference voltage times 2 to the power of n. This n here is actually just the number of bits of the ADC. And then this whole thing gets rounded down to the next integer. So that's what an ADC does. That is quite some math right there. As you can see here, whatever error you have in your reference voltage will be directly reflected in your ADC output code. For example, let's say your expected reference value is 5 volt, but actually you're getting 4 volt. And then you try to measure an input voltage of 1 volt. In this case, the correct ADC code should be 204. But what you are actually getting is 256 because your reference voltage is wrong. And that is a 25% error. To use something other than VDD as the ADC reference, in the Arduino language, they provided this function called analog reference. Uh, in this case, we're using an external connection as the reference. Now let's go back to the board to see what that means. In this example, we're using this teeny tiny connector here to connect 3.3 volt to the reference node. Now, of course, the 3.3 volt is not exactly a clean voltage, but it is a whole lot better than the VDD. Yeah, let's just say this is good enough. When your reference is 3.3 volt, then your ADC's input range is from 0 to 3.3 volt. Now, obviously, you cannot use that range to measure your 5 volt VDD directly. So what we are doing here is to use a voltage divider here of these two resistors to divide down the VDD from nominally 5 volt to nominally 2.5 volt, which falls well within the measurement range of 0 to 3.3 volts. Now you may be asking, what if you have to use VDD as your reference? Well, if you have to use VDD as your reference, you can. There are two solutions to this problem of VDD not being clean. The first solution is to use some sort of LC filter to filter out the noise before you feed the VDD into the reference pin. The second solution, which is my favorite, is to put in a lot of bypass capacitors. So let's do that. Let's add a lot of capacitors until there's no movement whatsoever in the VDD. Mission accomplished. Now let's talk about trick number two, which is Calibrate the reference voltage value. In this example here, I'm showing a Arduino Nano again, measuring the voltage of this battery and displaying it on this LCD screen. As you can see here, there's quite some difference between the calibrated reading and uncalibrated reading. Now why is that? To answer that question, we need to go back to the slide deck and look at some equations again. Oy. Welcome back to the slide deck. Let's look at two equations. The first equation is what the ADC does. 
You have seen that already. The second equation is what you need to do to convert the ADC output code back to the voltage value. This is useful if you are trying to make something like a multimeter out of your Arduino. If this reference voltage and this reference voltage don't match each other, then you're going to end up with an error in the multimeter that you're building. So what is the difference between these two reference voltages? This reference voltage is what is actually being fed to the ADC physically, while this reference voltage is what you code into your program. Now let's go back to the Arduino IDE to look at how these two equations are actually used. Welcome back to the Arduino IDE. Now every time we call this analog read function here, the ADC will do what it does and perform this equation here. That is not something that we can change. What we can change is how we convert that ADC output code back into the voltage value that we can understand. And we do that in these two lines. These two lines are simply implementations of the second equation here. The only difference between them is the first line is using this calibrated reference. The second line here is using the nominal reference. And what's the difference between these two references? Let's go take a look. Okay. We'll come back to the board. Here we are using the 3.3 volt as the reference. As you can see, we're using this little wire to connect 3.3 volt here to the reference pin here. So naturally, we expect the reference voltage to be 3.3 volt. But is it? Let's try it out. Let's measure the reference voltage with this multimeter here on the right side. This multimeter is guaranteed to be accurate within half a percent point, which is pretty good, right? And according to this multimeter, the reference voltage is 3.378 volt, which is 78 millivolts off from the nominal 3.3 volt. Now armed with that piece of information, let's come back to this Arduino IDE and do the following change. This calibrated reference value should not be the same as the nominal reference, which is 3.3. Instead, it should be 3.378. And that is the only change you need to make in the code. So what is the effect of this calibration? As you can see here, the calibrated value matches the multimeter value really well. The uncalibrated value, not so much. Trick number three, take a lot of samples and take the average. This trick is relatively straightforward. It gives you the benefit of noise immunity and theoretically more number of bits. In this example here, again, we're using the Arduino Nano to measure the battery voltage. As you can see, the battery voltage is extremely stable. Our goal here is to demonstrate the noise immunity afforded by the technique of averaging. In order to do that, let's inject some noise into the system first. This is how to inject noise into the system. You disconnect the signal. In this case, the signal is the battery voltage. Then you connect the signal to a 22 kilo ohm resistor. At the other side of the resistor, connect a spaghetti-shaped wire to it, and then insert the other side of the spaghetti wire into the Arduino. The spaghetti-shaped wire serves as an antenna which grabs all kinds of noise from the air and injects into your system. From the LCD screen, you can see that we have tons of noise now. The amazing thing is, despite all of this noise, the average value that we're getting does not change. And that is the power of averaging. Of course, you can say you can also do some kind of noise filtering using some kind of LC or RC filter, and you're right. This averaging technique does give you another option, in addition to analog filtering. That's all for today. Hopefully, it has been useful for you. See you next time. Ooh.